many times have we been on the internet and then some high IQ person comes along and tells us, if you don't like it, stop using our stuff. White people invented the cell phone. White people invented the internet. White people invented everything. We invented everything. Well, let me bring some reality to you. You didn't invent everything. Everything that you keep naming that you invented were invented by black people. So let me teach you high IQ dummies a thing or two. The cell phone is actually 40 years old. I'm sure you didn't know this, but let me fill you in. And it was created by this black man right here in this picture. This black man created the cell phone. The cell phone turns 40 years old today. Meet the black man, Dr. Henry T. Sampson, who created it. Not, sorry, not a white man. Nope, not a white man that created the cell phone. This is a black man that did this. On April 3rd, 1973, Motorola engineer Marty Cooper placed the first public call from a cell phone, according to The Verge. In Midtown Manhattan, Cooper called Joel Engel, head rival research department, Bell Labs, saying, Joel, this is Marty. I'm calling you from a cell phone, a real handheld portable cell phone. The call was placed on a Motorola DynaTAC 8000X, weighed about 2.5 pounds. Because remember, those cell phones, when they first came out, they were ginormous. A far cry from today's four-ounce handsets. If it wasn't for Dr. Henry T. Sampson, we wouldn't have cell phone technology today. Again, white people meet the man that created the cell phone, a black man by the name of Dr. Henry T. Sampson. Not white man, black man. Got it high IQ? All right, let's move on. Isn't it funny how mainstream media hasn't made him an icon based on his invention? Actually, no. Because of the climate of America with the falsify um, notion that whites are the creator of the universe is just laughable. But see, when you still, when you go and get real education, you learn the truth. So my black brothers and sisters, I want you to wipe a clean slate in your mind and start all over because schools in America teach white supremacy. But then when you go and start learning real history, you'll realize White supremacy is nothing but a compiled of made up lies. And it should not be seen as anything else but just a bunch of pile of lies. All of their advantages that they have, they sat around and made the shit up. They have no real clear advantage over anyone. They made up it, made everything up. The only reason why they rule the world is because they got a gun. It's not from intelligence. It's not from creating everything. It's not from being the most knowledgeable. It's weaponry. All right, so I'm going to leave the link to this article. This man is very phenomenal, ladies and gentlemen. So please take the time and read about this man that created technology that high IQ people can't live without. Moving on. Now, how many times have we been online and then some high IQ dummy comes along and makes the claim that internet came from white people? It came from white people. Well, actually it didn't. The internet was created by a Nigerian American. 
And I'm going to let another white person tell you this. One of the great minds of the information age is a Nigerian American named Philip Emigwale. He had to leave school because his parents couldn't pay the fees. He lived in a refugee camp during the Civil War. He won a scholarship to university and went on to invent a formula that lets computers make 3.1 billion calculations per second. Got that high IQ? The internet was created by black people. So why are you on our technology and using our cell phone technology every day? All right. So now Philip Emigwali, the creator of the internet. See this face? See this face? This is the creator of the internet. High IQ dummies. This is the creator. So now, this man created the internet, and <clears throat> how many of you high IQ dummies are on it every single day? Every day you're on there. So now we got the black man, Dr. Henry T. Sampson, that created the uh, cell phone, okay, created the cell phone. And then we have the man right here that created the internet. Black men are amazing. They are so amazing that they create things that you can't live without. Just saying. So now this Nigerian, the father of the internet, and of course, you know, whenever a melanated man creates something, you're never going to hear about it. But whenever some caucasoid duplicates something, we got to hear all about it. And it's got to be put out there that they are the inventors of everything. Well, that doesn't look like it's panning out to be true at all. Meet the father of the internet. Of course, you never heard of him because he's from Africa and the mainstream media won't. Um, they want the brand of creator. They don't want the black man to have the brand of creator. So <clears throat> these things are just not put out there. Philip Emigwali, a computer scientist, but one example. He uses his mathematical computer expertise and develop methods for extracting more petroleum from oil fields. Mm-mm-mm, mm-mm-mm. Wasn't done by a white man. It was his formula that used 65,000 separate computer processors to perform 3.1 billion calculations per second in 1989. That feat led to computer scientists comprehending the capabilities of supercomputers and the practical application of creating a system that allowed multiple computers to create <clears throat> He is recognized as one of the fathers of the internet. He is the father of the internet. He ain't one of them. He is. See, I know it's difficult for you to give credit to someone that's melanated, but the melanated people are the really the ones that are responsible for these things that you are picking up and using every day. But I got one more kicker for you, high IQ dummies. Got one more kicker for you. The automobile was actually created by the black man. You know that vehicle you get in every day, sit behind and get on the highway and drive to work and drive to, and do your errands and go shopping in? That was actually created by a black man, C.R. Patterson. It was created in the 1800s. And this is one of his um, buses that he created. 
In fact, they said his vehicles were of better quality than Henry Ford's Model T. Okay, his vehicles were um, more sturdier. And here's sketches of it. You can see the actual vehicle. Nobody's making this stuff up. Okay, this was made in the 1800s by a former slave. Former slave, look at these pictures. Former slave, C.R. Patterson. These are his vehicles. You're looking at actual sketches and pictures of his vehicles. Okay, former slave. Now, I'm going to leave the link to this also um, so that you can come out at your own leisure and read about C.R. Patterson, the former slave that actually created the vehicle, the car, the automobile, the bus. Every time you see a bus on the road, think about a black man. Okay, this was the 1800s, 1850s to 1873. Now, let's look at when Ford put out the Model T. The Model T came out in October 1st, 1908. Let's go back and look at Patterson. Let's go back. Let's go back. Okay, Patterson vehicles actually started in the early 1870s. <laughs> Let's go back to the Model T. Let's go back. 1908. And it was flimsy compared to this man. They said his vehicles were of way better quality than the vehicles that Ford put out. Again, I will leave the link to these articles in the description box so you can come out at your own leisure and learn who really made automobiles that you are driving every day. It wasn't Henry Ford. Damn. It's a lesson that just had to be learned. Please leave your comment and subscribe. And if you can, donate to my channel, ladies and gentlemen. Please do. All praises to the Black men that revolutionized everything in America. Peace, family.